So this video is regarding a lot of things. So uh, the first two weeks, uh, last two weeks rather, of Daniel, once again, where I was having that discussion with one of the Freedom Rally leaders, and he said it was a pre-tribulation rapture the last week of Daniel. Well, I'm proving here that it's not, and I actually added another paragraph regarding proving that there is no pre-tribulation rapture. And uh, it is amazingly, I would say, uh, very persuasive and possibly actual uh, proof, undeniable proof to, 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 to most people that there is no pre-tribulation rapture. So I did mention this to him regarding the first, uh, first the last two weeks of Daniel chapter 7 and how Daniel chapter 7 or uh, chapter 9 rather, uh, the two weeks of Daniel chapter 9, uh, uh, how they, um, and the 14 years after, how they correspond with Leviticus 26. Absolutely amazing. So I want to go over that, then I want to go over it quickly, just read the, regarding the, de the delay, what the delay is once again, uh, what's in the package within the 70 years, with all the prophecies, and then if there's enough time, the pre-tribulation rapture, or I might do that in a separate video. Beginning here in the last two weeks of Daniel here. 9, 24a, 26a, and 27a. The 62 weeks plus one week is 69 years. The last week is 69 plus one week, which is the 70 years. Completed. In Isaiah 3, 4, 34, 8 rather. The year and day of recompense is the last week, referring to one year. That would be a day, also the day of the Lord. Bringing the 70th year to completion. Then a carryover to fulfill all things, after the 70 years are completed. In this covenant age, the two weeks after the 70th week is execution of eternal condemnations to the third and fourth generations, dimensions, from God himself. And that's exactly what says here in Leviticus 26. In Daniel 24, 27, the 49, 62, 69, 70 year prophecies counting from 1967.5. So this is, the, this is a different seven year cycle. It's the third seven year cycle, as I explained, that's revealed, that it's actually revealed, more revealed, greatly revealed while I was writing this, this book. And adding seven year cycles amounts to uh, 1967 plus 49 years is 2016.5, the seventh year of that seven year cycle and start of the Sabbath year. Okay, so what I did is I just changed this to those seven year cycles, the specific seven year cycles that begin at point five, okay, which is the Day of Atonement. And start of the Sabbath year, 2016.5 began the Sabbath year, adding one more year is 2017.5, first year of the next seven year cycle and start of the 50th year, the Jubilee year, year of Jubilee. 1947.5 plus 62 weeks is 2019.5, or sorry, 2009.5, the seventh year of that seven year cycle. Adding seven more years, 2016.5, um, equals 2016.5. Okay, so this is showing just how those seven years, like where they land, obviously. So 1947.5 plus 69, so it would be 62, right, plus, um, here's a 62 years, right, and then you, so you add another one, so you add another seven year cycle, is 2016.5. 2017.5 plus 69 is 2016.5. The seventh year of that seven year cycle. Adding one year to accomplish 70 years is 2017.5, according to Resolution 181 in November of 1947. The first year of the next seven year cycle, ending of the Sabbath year and beginning of the Jubilee year. Uh, so counting from 1940, so this here is 2017.5, the last year, the first year of the next seven year cycle, ending of the Sabbath year and beginning of the Jubilee year. 
counting from 1945.5, 1948 plus 69 is 2017.5 equals 2018.5. Okay, so the, all these numbers are set. I show it in different ways, like adding another year to that would be 2018.5, right? And that would be the 70th year. If you start in 1948.5, it's a year's difference. One year is 2018.5. Ending the Jubilee year and the 70 year prophecy after the 70 years expire. Judgment of the seventh trumpet begins to sound. 2017.5 plus 14 equals 2031.5. And 2018.5 plus 14 is 20. 20, 32.5. Those days will be shortened. So God showed me the 14-year uh, cycles between the trumpets. So after the so the seventh seventh seventieth year runs its course. It's the era of the seventh king. Then the trumpet sounds of the of the seventh uh, trumpet, and it sounds. And God Himself now, right, is judging. God himself is doing the chastising and all of the, the, the works. So in Daniel 9.27, after 62 weeks, Jesus Christ was cut off in great spiritual, physical tribulation. The first half of that seven-year cycle was accomplished at the first appearing of Jesus Christ, and the angels were ministering to him. The seven-year cycle of the 62 weeks of the 70 years from 1947 to 2017 was accomplished in the time of dispensation of the sixth trumpet. That's the number of man. In Daniel 27, the covenant was confirmed with his disciples on the day of Pentecost after 50 days, of which included three days spent in hell, 40 days of visitation with his disciples, and seven days in heaven as he opened up the seals there. In Daniel 9, 24 to 20, then the day of Pentecost. So in Daniel 9, uh, 24 to 27, from 1947.5, the 69 weeks end in 2016.5. The last week is the 70th year, 2016.5 to 2017.5. 2017 is the Sabbath Jubilee year. 1947.5 plus 70 is 2017.5. Adding another two weeks, 14 years of delay, Habakkuk 2.3, for the time of dispensation of the seventh trumpet, is 2031.5. One week is seven days, also seven years. Two weeks equals 14 days or years. 14 days or years represents both covenants. The covenant is confirmed in Daniel 9.27. The covenant is confirmed with his disciples throughout the age in every numerical cycle. At the closing of this age, the confirmation is according to the desolate conditions of the times. So the covenant is confirmed with his disciples throughout the age. And, and, and so that covenant was first confirmed on the day of Pentecost. Throughout all the seven 3.5 year cycles. In Leviticus 26, 14, 27 and 33, two spans of 35 years added together beginning from Resolution 181, November 1947, Daniel 25, A amounts to November 2017. Adding two more seven-year cycles lengthens the delays, lengthens and delays the years to 2031. Adding seven years to 37 is 42 years, the opposing cycle of the beast. Adding another seven years for a total of 14 years equates to 49 years, time required to build the temples, children of Jesus Christ. 46 plus three years, three days that Jesus Christ spent in the heart of the earth is 49 years. Build, tear down, this temple and I will build it in three days and the, the temple he was talking about was his body and the last enemy to, to be defeated I think that's what this says or um, is death okay uh, and so Jesus did those three years to defeat death Jesus Christ is the and that completes the temple which is people Jesus Christ is the flesh soul and spirit of the building the orchestrator of salvation. Through those three days spent in the heart of the earth, in the first covenant, there were delays in the judgments after the 70th year. 
So too in this second covenant age, Revelation 10, 6, see Peter 3, 9, and James 5, 7. Those years and days will be shortened due to the war of Armageddon. In this, in this covenant age, God is executing the fullness of eternal judgments of blessings and condemnations against the third and fourth generations dimensions. Those who render others to death bear the greater sins. In Amos 4.4 is the three years of sacrifices, tithes, the inhabitants of the world bring to the Creator after the three years of Leviticus 25.21-23, 2016, 2017, 2018, leading to the final seven-year cycles of which will be cut short. Uh, it, it actually begins in 2015.5 to 2018.5, the three years of Leviticus. The three years of sacrifices, ties mentioned, refer to the products of society. Those are the three days. After Leviticus, you have the products of society, the produce. You eat the produce, which is the products of society, which is the flesh, soul, and spirit before before Almighty Father Creator. Okay, so this speaks regarding, once again, the two horses, and once again, you add the seven years. For the third and the fourth horse, you add seven years. That's in the book. Okay, here it shows the one, three horse, the fourth watch of the day and night, third watch. And uh, not a physical, rather spiritual dominion in this covenant age, in Leviticus 26, 14 to 18. Okay, because the first covenant was based on the second horse, second watch of the day and night, first and second horse. A physical dominion of the flesh, soul, and spirit. The number of the flesh and physical dominion is five, hence five seven year cycles in Leviticus 26, 14 to 18. In that covenant age. But now we add two. The present second age, if God does that, the present second age, covenant age, is based in the third horse, third watch of the day and night. Not a physical dominion, rather spiritual dominion of the flesh, soul, and spirit, which is the five senses of man plus the soul and spirit of the, of, of the conscience, the hand breath of man, just belonging to man, number six. That's the reed and the measuring rod and the hand breath on the six cubit measuring rod. It's a reed and a hand breath. Six cubits is the reed. The measuring reed was six cubits plus the hand breath. The sixth trumpet, with, this, with the covenant of condemnation against the third and the fourth horse. With the covenant of condemnation against the third and fourth horse. God can add more years to, to the five seven-year cycles of Leviticus 26, 14, 27 to fulfill the time of delay after the 70 years expire. Okay, that's the delay. It's because Lucifer saying the devil, no, he, he doesn't have victory. He can't stand before God. And so he, he's delaying. He doesn't want to go to his judgment. And so God is bringing it to the dranks. He's bringing it to the dregs. They're drinking it to the dregs. So it's the covenant of condemnation because Jesus Christ began to judge and condemn. The Father began to judge and condemn after those 50 days on the day of Pentecost when the age of grace began. Well, God, he began to condemn and judge and condemn to execute those judgments according to this covenant age, which is our eternal judgments of blessings and curses, life and death. All things written in the book of the seven seals of the scriptures of Revelation fully manifest spiritually within the 70 years. After the 70 years, the seventh trumpet begins to sound. There is a delay for allowing the physical manifestations to fully bloom. Counting the years from Resolution 181, November 1947, 2010 to 2013.5 in that specific seven-year cycle was the next 3.5-year ministry of the risen Savior with his disciples. Because Jesus started his ministry, right, on the Day of Atonement. So his 3.5-year ministry was uh, on the Day of Atonement, and it ended in Passover. Passover is the first month of the year. It's not 0.5. Unless you're going by using the, the Passover as, a, as, as the middle part of the year, because it's, it's the, uh, the summer house. 
So you have the summer house, Day of Atonement, and then you have the winter house, which brings you back to the Passover. But the Day of Atonement is the center of the lampstand. And, and it could work both ways. I'm sure it does. But going by this seven-year cycle, this is, these are the numbers that I'm using. Okay? The Passover is the first. It says in, in Exodus, because in Exodus, it says, Exodus 12 says, the Passover, this will be the first month of the year for you. So the Passover is the first month of the year. So the Day of Atonement says it's in the seventh month of the year. So that means it's in the beginning, it's in the center on a, on a, on a, a leap year, pregnant leap year, where it's positioned on the 10th there. It's basically in the center, 10 days after, the very center uh, of, uh, the whole month is placed in the center because there's six months, six months on both sides. It's a 12-month calendar. So it, it's, the Day of Atonement is, is in the center um, when they add that extra month. Uh, it's more, I think it's more centered then. So, and that's an, uh, it's called an expectant year also. It's a pregnant year. It's also called an expectant year. So, um, that's regarding, that's also mentioned in the book. And it's all mentioned uh, in, in the 49th and 50th chapter. Um, so, uh, at least 90% of it. So, where was I? Um, so, resolution. So, counting the years from Resolution 181, November 1947, 2010, to 2013.5, was the next 3.5 year ministry of the risen Savior. So, so what happened was, is that um, the um, this was to do with the, his disciples, because he did the three the 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 first ones before this. Before this, he did that, and so it would have began in uh, two zero zero. Uh, um, nine two zero zero um, it would have began from 210 minus three and a half years it would start on the day of atonement and then go to 210 because after this time frame he's cut off and he has nothing so minus 3.5 years here you go three years back 2009 2008 2006 it would be like 2000 and uh I think uh, 6.5 because you have 7, yeah, and then 3. So it would be 2006.5 would be the middle, would be the, of, of, this, of the, the year, would be the, uh, the last before the first year of the next seven, of the next seven year cycle. And that's exactly what this is. 2010 was the first day of a new seven year cycle. And so it is the next three and a half years that begins a new year, right, with the disciples. Because he had already done that here. After the 62 years. 62 years brings you to, to uh, from 1947, brings you to 2010. Right, 62 plus 47 is 210. So you have those... Uh, those years, because it's after 62 seven, after 62 years. I'm looking for my calculator. Whoops, I'm looking for my calculator. It's around here somewhere. Okay, so here, if I take this calculator and I'll go um, 19, 1947. I always have to keep doing this. Plus 62 is two. Is 209. So it's to the end of 209. The full year of 209 is, and then it's 2010. If you go to, if you started in 1948, you have an, an extra year, but I'm going by 47. This, this seven year cycle is from 1947, which was the sound of the second trumpet. So, so after 62 years, Messiah is cut off. 
So you go, he went from the Day of Atonement, which is the center of the lampstand, which is the, the winter house, begins in the winter house, which is, he begins in 0.5 of the year, and three years is 2010. And then this is for the disciples to do. Okay, this is the last week of Daniel. Okay, so count of the years was the next 3.5 year ministry of the risen Savior with his disciples, leading them through the 3.5 year cycles of Daniel uh, 927. The prophecies are set and they're hid inside the 70 years under the appointed time for the closing of the age. Now, I do mention uh, elsewhere here in this chapter that, that the last half of Daniel 9, 27, the last half, three and a half years, because his ministry was cut short, the last seven years is for the church to do. And the, and, and the thing is to consider here is that those years began already. So there was great, must, there was like great increases happening within that time frame. And it's in the 70 years. And so that really began. That's part of us going through the Great Tribulation. As Jesus Christ did. And he said that we're going to be going through it. He never said he's going to take us out. He never mentioned it. He, and, and, and I prove it here. I prove it here. And I'm, I'll get to that, that part as well. And he, he says, the Father sent me, so I send you. And he, he talked about all these things in, in Matthew and 24 and, and, and uh, many different places. So here we have the 3.5 year ministry of the risen Savior with his disciples, leading them through the 3.5 year cycles of Daniel 9.27. The prophecies are set there hid inside the 70 years unto the appointed time for the closing of the age. Point 0.5 represents reaching to the Day of Atonement and the hand breath of God with mankind. All numerical cycles are spiritually spiritual and physical stages of developments from beginning to end of the covenant age. The seven year cycles beginning from after 62 years and the 70 year do not include a pre-tribulation rapture according to the consistency of the scriptures. The ministry of Jesus Christ was cut short for his disciples to share in his ministry of great tribulation. So here is another proof. In Mark 15, 25, the third hour was 9 a.m when Jesus Christ was first put on the cross. Three hours later was 12 p.m., also representing midnight. In Matthew 25, verse 6, the cry to go out to meet the bridegroom went out at midnight, time of the beginning of great tribulation, three hours, three days of great darkness. In Revelation 8.12, uh, 8 um, <laughs> chapter 8, point, uh, verse 12, the fourth trumpet is Jesus Christ on the cross in between the three hours years of light and hours years of darkness the Sun and the moon right so this is showing us here that when Jesus Christ was on the cross okay once again he was in between and it says here the Sun and moon and it says here in Matthew 25 6 is come out and meet the bridegroom and it comes out at midnight. That's the three hours of three days of great darkness. He says to the church, come out and meet the bridegroom. You see, that proves it, doesn't it? Think about that. It's a, cycle, it's a continuous cycle until the Lord returns. He never, there, there is no mention that he's taken the church out before any of these three and a half year cycles. Three hours, the last three hours, which was, he was, he did it right at the, in the center uh, of the, of the lampstand. So this is actually 3.5 also. It's 3 and 3.5. And you'll get that when you read how, how that works. He's in between everything, right? He's in between, and that's on the Day of Atonement. He, it says that Jesus Christ was, it was the fourth cycle, right? I, said, I mentioned it here. It was the fourth year of the, of the lampstand. Well, that's the Day of Atonement. Point five of that, right? So you have three years at the end of that, that year, but you also have 3.5 years. It's 0. 0.5 plus three years if you're counting towards the, end, uh, the last three and a half year cycle. Of Daniel. Daniel begins with the first year and ends with 0.5. The last half of Daniel begins with 0.5 and ends with this after the seventh year, the seventh day, the th after three days. Three point, 
one and then three brings it to the end of the seven year cycle and that could be any seven year cycle so that's uh, there's a lot more to go over I went over more of it I think but uh, but I added this one in and and so it's about the same as the last one uh, this speaks regarding uh, the harvest here's here's another one regarding the no pre-tribulation rapture important important doctrine extremely important because that really makes people want to prepare throughout scripture reference is given for one resurrection from the grave and two groups harvested at the return of messiah the resurrection and first harvest which is the harvest would be is the glorification is found in john uh, which leads to the glorification let me say that is found in john 5 25 to 28 revelation 6 9 to 11 and Revelation 11, 1, 4, 7, 13. This is the martyrdom happening here in Revelation 11. And then they rise here in verse 13. That's, the, that's coming up from the grave. They're, they're changed in a twinkling of an eye. That's the rapture. And then you have here Revelation 6, 9, 11. They, they, they're changed into the body of Christ. That is, it's, it's really the body that Jesus had. The glorification will come after. The actual um, physical, the spiritual body. I think it's a greater glory. Um, it's not to think. It says you, you come to uh, Zion, where, uh, where the place where just men are made perfect. So there's men there. Then the glorification happens afterwards, and I, I explained that process in the in the manuscript in in uh, very clearly, very clearly. And that'll be uh, after the second millennial age for that great multitude to see the seeds of Noah. So here we have. Um, and Abraham. In Revelation 6, the souls under the altar are crying out. They're saying, when will you avenge us of our blood? He says, wait a little longer. They were given white robes. They were comforted until the rest of your brethren come in as they're, and they're, they'll be murdered the same way that you were. And they're beheaded for their testimony. Okay. And John 5, 25, 28 uh, speaks regarding that as well. So um, let me go into John, John 5 here. John 5, John 5, 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so he has given the Son to have life in himself. So, um, and 28 says, And he hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming at which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. 25 and 28. All that are in the grave shall hear his voice. That's what Jesus spoke about. That's, he did not speak of a pre-tribulation rapture. He spoke, the only thing that he spoke here, that's the first harvest, right? This is the first harvest. The first and second harvest are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 51, 30, 53 and 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 17. What these speak about is about these ones that are in the grave that come up. And then after them, they that are alive and remain, which is the 144,000. And it's, it's, it could, it's the difference there could be 45, 75 days, which makes a lot of sense. You have the uh, 1,290 days, 1,260 days, and 1,335 days. Blessed are those who make it to the end of the 1,335 days. They're more blessed than those that, are, that, are, that rise because those are the 144,000, whoever they happen to be. And if you look at the difference in dates from, 90, from, um, 26, from 1,260 days is 75 days. Or, uh, and then from, from um, 20, 1,290 days is 45 days. Right? That's what, uh, I believe that's what the numbers are there. And so it could be a, a difference of 75 days, 45 days, something like that. But for sure, that 144,000, they witness that coming up. They're shooting up. Out of the, they witness it. Uh, so, do, so do the wicked. And, um, and then after, after that, um, it was uh, ba ba basically uh, just just days, maybe those days, those amount of days, and then 
the Lord returns. So it won't be it won't be long after that. It's not going. There is no mention anywhere of a uh, pre-trib or a, a mid-trib rapture. It's all done at the end. It's all done at the end. The second harvest consists of the 144,000. They are dead in Christ, caught up and glorified while yet alive at his glorious appearing. Jesus Christ spoke of three and four resurrections from the grave. The first was of himself. Now this was, right, in the, um, in the, uh, I just had to disconnect my phone. So the uh, three and four resurrections from the grave began the first was of himself. The second was of the first fruits of the first covenant. That was in Matthew 27 when he, uh, at, at his resurrection. The third group will rise after they are martyred. So the, uh, he, the, the first fruits rose in that order and then he himself rose in that order. But uh, more than like, what happened was um, he went into the grave three days. Then, that's how it's written, but he went into the grave three days. And so he preached there for the three days. Then he rose, and he rose with his people. He led them out of captivity. The fourth group will rise. The third group will rise after they are martyred. The fourth group rises after a thousand years of hell fire regarding resurrection. The 144,000 are not resurrected uh, simply because they don't die. They're alive to see and witness the second coming of Christ. How awesome. Context of scripture as a whole does not reveal a pre-tribulation rapture. A secret, there is no secret pre-tribulation rapture. The fourth resurrection occurs after a thousand years of hellfire. Mark 12, 25 to 27. Context of Scripture as a whole does not reveal a pre-tribulation rapture, rather proving oneself to God by passing under the rod of great tribulations in all seasons of developments. In Micah 4, 10, O daughter of Zion, travailing in the field in the city of Babylon represents Jerusalem, the children of both covenants. They are strengthened, increased in stature with the Holy Spirit, as was Jesus Christ through great tribulations. Others are not chosen to partake in the first resurrection for continuing with false visions. Because they're not ready. They're, you cannot, if you die in a false vision, you're not ready to be a first fruit. So that's it there. And I wanted just to touch on... Uh, yeah, I read this already. Okay. So there it is. That's what the scriptures say. There is, this is 100% accurate, the entire thing. So there is no deviation from it. That's what the scripture says. So that's for everybody now. You have the truth, and now everybody can make up their mind. Take it in prayer and seek the Lord. And God will reveal when we continually knock and chase and pursue these, these matters. He says to test all spirits, bring it all to me. Bring it all to the Lord and let him, and open up, we open up ourselves and say, Lord, whatever the truth is, I don't care what it is. I do care what it is. I want the truth. I care about the truth. Lead me in the truth. I only want the truth, no matter where it leads. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I beg and pray in the name of Jesus Christ.